Hosea's house is, is a place for women and children in crisis, and that can look many different ways. It doesn't just have to be domestic violence, but right. that's truly where it came from, um, Hosea's house. We're not an emergency crisis shelter, but we are transitional housing, which means we're going to invest in them anywhere from six months to two years. So provided that they want change, and not everyone wants change. Every, you know, Some want a handout rather than a hand up, and we're not about that. We are about empowering people that have that desire to move forward, mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like. So if a, you know, we'll do an interview, um, we have them fill out the application, we ask a lot of questions. We pray before they come, you know, come into the house, but we, we sit down with them and interview them. We usually have them come back a second time to do a second interview. Uh, one, to ask, see if they had any questions, but also for us to be able to discern whether or not they're really ready. Right. And then from there we do, um, we do a background check to make sure that what they're telling us is true and that they don't pose a, a risk to our families. And then we do a drug screening too. So. We, we do all those things uh, because one, I feel like there has to be an investment uh, for them, whether that be their time or, or, you know, so that second interview is them committing to come back. Uh, and, and it seems like such a small thing, but it's, it's really big when you, sure. when you think about it. So we, um, that's, that's the process for, you know, and then when, when we have them move in, then, then we sit down with them and make a plan of what that, would look like for that individual on how to be sustainable. Maybe that's getting their GED, maybe that's budget counseling, maybe it's parenting classes. Mm -hmm. So we design their program for them, not just, it's not cookie cutter. So, right. uh, because I've had women with master's degrees at my house. So it's, you know, there's, it, it looks many different forms. And, and, and you take in not just the woman, but their children as well, yeah, which we is another separating mm -hmm. factor right. for... Yeah, we have children, uh, we take in children eight and under. Eight and under. So, um, and, and that can come with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of trauma there too. So, but I was a child of, mm -hmm. of domestic, I, I, you know, I was traumatized as a child. So I can so relate to you know, how they're feeling and, sure. and living in fear. And it's amazing when, when you give a child um, a beautiful room with a clean bed and, and we put stuffed animals on there to make them feel, you know, so when they come in, they feel welcome. We, we usually give them their own blanket. Um, it's amazing they sleep so sound right. because for the first time, they feel safe. Right, wow. And that's really what you know, that, that's where my heart is too, because I, I can remember, you know, years of, of just living in, in fear. Sure, in your situation. So tell me, since it's been in, in existence since 2009, right. you guys have served over 50 families there? No, we've house? served probably, probably or, close to 100 families, 100 now. families now. And um, so, and, and that can look many different ways, sure. because Hosea's house just isn't about the, the residents in our home, we are about community involvement as well. So we work with the, the women in our community. We also serve, um, serve our, our families that way as well. So by meeting their, you know, helping them with their needs or whatever they, you know, the spiritual needs as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one woman, I came in one morning and, and she was asleep on our, uh, she, was, she had fallen asleep on our, our rocking chair mm -hmm. outside. And she was in that. her pajamas. And, you know, um, a little bag with her, and uh, but she knew that that was a safe place, and so that's that's wow. one of the things where I feel like you know God has truly brought us here to be a light in a dark place. Mm -hmm. Now, what's been the most memorable story of how Hosea's help, house has helped a woman? Mm. or the child child yeah. or whatever what's been the most memorable so far um, well we, we had a lady to graduate um, our program where um, she was um, addicted to heroin and she had went through a recovery um, recovery house and she contacted me to come to Hosea's house about nine months into her treatment there and at first I was like no way you know I, I, I can't do um, heroin addict. It, it terrified me. Uh, 
but God just would not allow me to let go of her. I mean, her she was constantly in my mind, and, and he just spoke to my heart one day, and he said, what if that was your child? And, um, boy, that just, that got me. Like, I thought, God, what if that was my daughter, you know? Um, she's trying, you know, she was, she was trying to, to get her life together. So I went and met her that day, and uh, I just knew that God had sent her to us. And she was the best, probably one of the best residents I ever had. And she, um, never a problem with the rules. Uh, but when she came to us, um, CPS had told us that they were, they were terminating her rights as a, a, a parent. Um, we refused to receive that. We just believed God that He would restore her. And um, they ended up calling back and, and saying that they were not going to terminate her rights. And um, just weeks before she graduated our program, she uh, received her two teenage daughters back. And so she's left our house and, and uh, she's 18 months clean. She meets with us twice a month. We, we our ministry has helped her in, in the aspect where for the next year we'll help her um, with her rent, paying half of her rent, provided that she's uh, doing the things to move forward because we feel like that's where sometimes they fail when they get back out mm -hmm. and, and life happens and, and it's overwhelming. So she um, meets with me twice a, a month. She drug tests. She works with a budget counselor, and she's uh, required to attend church with her family. And they are doing extremely well. And this is the first year since the children were in foster care for two years that they spent Christmas together. And and she she knows that that Hosea's house was a big part of helping her change her life. And. So it's it's that, that that keeps me going. It's it's you know the you know those types of residents that um, you know that you see the fruit. Yeah, and even we were talking about some of the challenges um, with your ministry and about how sometimes even though they want the help, they don't continue through the program. Right. And they slip out yeah. and they go back out to their their old ways or their right. life as it was. But you had told me, too, that even through those little things, you know, just in showing them a different way right. or showing them more love than what they've ever experienced, mm -hmm. talk to them about that one yeah. call that you got. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had one, one lady several years ago, probably four years ago, um, I had to put out of the house. She just was totally tearing, you know, the house apart and just breaking everything down and just, you know, running around. and. And I, yeah, I loved her. I truly loved her, uh, and it was hard. But I knew that she wasn't ready, and she needed to leave uh, for the health of everyone else in the house. And so I set her out, and I can remember her walking down the street here and, and watching her carry her clothes, and knowing she didn't have a place to go. And it was, I, I broke. I mean, sure. I just thought, God, here we've invested all this time, and um, but just recently she reached out to me, and. Um, and told me that, that she loved me and that um, she knew that she could trust me and that if she had questions, she could call me because right. I was like, you know, the mother that she didn't feel like she was connected to. And so, um, you know, that, and that she was in a, a, a much better place and, and uh, spiritually even. And so that's, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's a process. And, and she apologized mm -hmm. to me and she said, I'm sorry that I left the way I did wow. and uh, I said you know you just weren't ready and sometimes we just have to to walk down another road in order to see it I know in my own life uh, you know coming from from the dysfunctional life that I had uh, it would have taken me a while to be able to uh, to get on the road that I'm you know um, so it's it's a process and sure. um, there's always hope you know, as long as there's breath in life, there's always hope. And we continue to pray. I continue to pray uh, for them, that God will manifest himself in their life. So if anybody watching this is inspired by your story, <laughs> as I was, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and they feel a calling on their heart to get out and do something that really the Lord's maybe placed on their heart, what advice would you have for them? Do it. <laughs> do it. It's terrifying. It's scary. 
to walk in the unknown. I mean, I read the scripture where Abraham picked up his family and went to a land he had never been and pitched a tent. And it, how terrifying would that be, you know? And, and, but wow, the benefits, the just trusting God in the process where he yeah. does the miracles. I mean, it would be, think about the great stories that I have because I trusted God and look what he did. And guess who gets all that glory and all that credit? Him. But what if I would just said, hey, you know what, my church, they, they got this house for me, and you know, I, I got to take on that. Who gets the glory in that? You know, right. so right. God God calls us, you know, we as Christians, um, you know, we just don't want to suffer. We don't want to, to take up our cross. We want to be comfortable. And God has never called us to be comfortable. You will never find that in the Word of God. But, you know, in the book of Hebrews, it said they were sawed in two. That they were, you know, crucified. They were, you know, challenged and, and beaten. Shipwrecked. And there sat Paul and Silas in the prison. I think about that, you know. Chained and beaten and singing praises to the one that they knew could rescue. And I think we as Christians need to believe that God is always in control. And, and we miss the blessings when we remain in our comfort zone. When we remain to be comfortable, I'm not saying that God can't bless you, mm -hmm. but I'm saying you miss the real big blessings. And wow, just, just think when we get to heaven, you know? So just, just trust Him. And I just wanted to honor you because I just think of people like you. I mean, and hearing your story, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, you were somebody that's totally just focused on the calling that God's placed on your heart. Having, and I'm sure it was scary in the process, but oh, you know what? You did it times. anyway. Right. You know? I was and terrified. <laughs> I was terrified to fail. I have a big fear of failure. That's one of my, my things that God works on me. And so I was terrified of failing, but I wasn't terrified of God failing. And if we can get that mindset that he can do anything but fail. And a man, a businessman asked me at that dinner when I was fundraising, what if God doesn't give you all the money? And I said, well, it's his house. And the way I look at it, he has to pay his own bills. <laughs> and he was like, well, you put me in my place. And that's exactly how oh, God did awesome. it because I didn't get all the money. Uh -huh. He required another leap of faith. Amazing. So I am honoring you today. I, I was like, with my cry. jewelry business, okay, so my jewelry business, I'm like, it's, it's great. I love designing jewelry, but I'm like, you know, God's placed on my heart to do something to honor women and curate a piece for these awesome women who just step out in faith and do things for helping others. And just to see the impact that you've made in this community. I made a piece, and I made a piece that kind of represents oh, the soul. colors of Hosea's house. I you love said the, it. The green and the blue and the gold, and I mixed it with silver because I figured you could wear it with a t-shirt. Your Hosea's yes. house t-shirt. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then earrings oh, to match. Soul. So blue lapis and. I probably should put it on, huh? And then a bracelet. Wow! I am just. We're gonna I call am at this all. the Hosea's house. Set. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, only God can do this thing. Can you see it? Can you all see it? Let's see. Yes. Oh. Amen. Thank you, God. See, so. that's what He does. That's what He does. He does amazing, crazy stuff. And people ask me all the time, like, how did you do this? And I'm like, I'm not that good. Trust me. <laughs> you know what I am? I was obedient. Yeah. And he brings people like you into my life. And I have said from the beginning, I don't chase it. I, I never go after people. I, I let God bring them to me. Where can people find out more about Hosea's house if they wanted to learn more about how they can maybe get involved? Where would they go? Yep, they can go to our website. It's Hosea's house, H-O-S-E-A-S -S, house.com. Okay. Um, and we're also on Facebook. Okay. Yeah.